So when, when you show up on a tower site, if this is your own property, you're going to have a pretty good feeling for this. But if you do show up on your buddy's place to work or somewhere where you've never been before, there's some safety precautions you need to just take before you get working. Uh, the first one would be uh, power lines. We have had some folks over the years who have been seriously hurt or killed because their antennas have gotten onto the power lines. So if you're putting up a vertical or dipoles or anything, the first thing you need to do is figure out where the, where the power lines are. Because it's pretty obvious, but it needs to be stated, you need to stay away from them. They're extremely dangerous. If you think about it, that's just one of those common sense things. A lot of this is common sense, but it can be overlooked and can come back and get you. Um, when I show up on an on a unknown tower, I'm not too worried about falling off the structure, but I'm worried about the structure falling down with me on it. I think that's probably as much or more of a risk as anything we do. So here again, if it's your own tower, you're going to know how it was put in. If you're showing up at a strange site, you don't necessarily know what's under the ground at the guy wires. There's no way you can, can know. But you do have to make some educated guesses whether it's safe to climb this tower or not. And what I always did was um, check the rod coming out of the ground, uh, check the turnbuckles, make sure the turnbuckles weren't bought at uh, the local hardware store. Um, the guy wires are, are proper. The, there's thimbles on the end of these uh, preforms or steel guy wires, whatever the case may be. That's very important. If you just wrap this uh, cable around the bolt, it's, it's going to break, and I've seen that happen. So you have to have thimbles on everything. Guy wires need to be tensioned, not overly rusty. Um, we also want to look at um, the, the tension, and, and, and ten tension can really be um, off by quite a bit, and the structure is still safe. A real easy way is that I've always done is just kind of shake them. And if, if the action seems reasonable, uh, you're probably very safe to go up this tower. If they're overly tight or overly loose, you probably want to address the uh, turnbuckle issue at that time. Um, another thing is where we have uh, what we call Crosby clips up here on the guy wires. You never want to saddle the dead horse. I, I can't get into all the nuances of building a tower, but make sure the Crosby clips are put on in the correct manner. So you want to have the dead end underneath the uh, uh, bolt part of it. The other part's called the saddle, and the way you remember that is you never saddle the dead horse, which would be the dead end of the cable. So this guy, <coughs> this guy wire here, I have no concerns about. It's a, a, a nicely done installation. You can get a lot of this information out of the Roan catalog. That's been around forever. None of this stuff is new. It's uh, all very obvious. Now another thing to be concerned about when you go on a, to, to do your, your climb is look around the environment. Um, you want to just sort of make a quick determination, is there any bird nests up there? Because birds can attack you. I've had that happen. They're territorial. They'll come get you. Uh, look around for uh, uh, be a wasp nest hanging up there. I've had wasps on the tower. and. Those are just risk assessments you have to make. I'm not saying you can't climb a tower with birds or wasps, but you just have to be prepared for it. We also want to make sure that the, the, the tower itself is uh, in good condition. Roan towers are hollow leg towers, and if water's gotten in down inside of them, they can, the water can freeze and, and split the legs. That weakens them greatly. You want to make sure they're not rusted. Here again, you don't know what's going on going on inside the tower leg as far as rust and corrosion, but you can make a pretty good determination just by looking at the outside. If the tower legs are compromised, you have to make a decision in your own mind whether it's safe to go up the tower. And I've gone to plenty of tower sites where I wasn't comfortable with climbing that structure. It was beyond hope and sometimes just plain needs to be cut down and replaced. The other thing with the tower is it needs to be reasonably straight and plumb. If it's a freestanding structure, the, the plumb of the tower is really not that big of a deal. But on a, on a guide tower, 
it should be reasonably vertical, but more importantly, it needs to be reasonably straight. Um, if, you, if you envision a, a pencil, every, everything in compression is strong. So if you take a pencil and you try to smash it, you can't, but you can snap it. Same thing can happen with the tower. You've got to realize those guy wires are pulling down on the structure. And if it's in compression, it's very strong. If it's bowing up at an angle like that, the guy wires are pulling down and it could kink. You actually have to get fairly out of plumb for that to happen, but just sight up the tower, make sure it's it's vertical. When, when you when you go up a tower, um, you know, you just want to make sure that the weather conditions are reasonably proper. That's a personal decision as to whether or not you're willing to go up a tower or because of weather conditions. It's obviously a nice sunny day out here. Um, generally speaking, wind is not dangerous. It is not pleasant to work on top of a tower when it's blowing, but it's really not dangerous. The tower is not going to blow over if you've done these inspections correctly, and you're not going to blow off the tower. It just makes life kind of miserable. If it's raining, yeah, you can climb. I've climbed in rainstorms. I've climbed on towers which were completely covered in ice. And here again, if you use proper climbing techniques and you're attached 100% of the time, you can do it. But those are all decisions you have to make on your own. All right, so having uh, inspected our guy anchors, now we can look at the base of this tower. Um, this is a little bit unusual of a tower. This is actually an insulated base as part of a uh, four square antenna system. So. We're not going to talk about this insulated base. Let's just assume this is a regular old Rhone 25, either on a on a mounting plate or sunk down into the ground. What I want you to look for here is that these legs, especially down towards the bottom, because if water gets into these and doesn't have a drain hole, it's going to collect in the leg and potentially freeze and you'll, you'll split the side of these. That's just terrible when that happens. There's nothing you can really do much about it. I've seen that happen quite a bit if a guy doesn't install this with some kind of a drainage system at the bottom of these hollow towers. Um, you have to kind of make a determination whether the foundation on a guide tower is adequate to take the load. Really all it does is take the weight and keep the tower from kicking out. So foundation on a guide tower is nearly as critical as it would be on a freestanding structure, but you still have to make a determination whether the foundation is, is uh, safe for you to go up. And just generally look for the surface rust. A lot of Rhone towers have been up a long time, have some surface rust to them. It's really not debilitating. You have to make a determination, is the tower gone too far to be climbed safely? It also gives you some indication of what might be going inside where you can't see. You just don't want this thing to crumple, fall over, anything like that. And then I would look up just to see if it looks straight. If it's a guide tower, make sure it's not leaning over. Uh, when you have multiple set of guy wires, sometimes they're, they're leaning over. And, and like I said, that can cause the tower to be a lot weaker because it's no longer plumbing in compression. If the guy wires look good, you don't see rust, everything looks good, you just have to use your judgment. Every tower is different, every tower is installed differently. Hopefully they've been, in, if it's a Rhone tower or any tower for that matter, hopefully it was installed according to the manufacturer's specifications. If everything looks good, use your common sense. If you feel comfortable, then you can climb. If you have any reservations about it, it's up to you. Whether or not you think it's uh, strong enough to hold you, you just don't want it collapsing with you on it.